What's up, Homestead Homies? Welcome back to another episode of Growing Your Health. <laughs> Yay! It's off here with Doug and Stacy. I'm Doug. And I'm Stacy. And today we're going to just uh, try to prime your pumps and get you guys excited about the uh, spring vegetable planting time because it's right around the corner. And we want to urge you guys, because this is a great spring crop, is to start looking into more varieties of cabbages. This is, a, this is a red cabbage, there's a regular green cabbage, Napa cabbage, there's all different varieties just to start expanding and trying different types of cabbage because cabbage is so nutrient packed with vitamins and minerals, I mean it's just huge. And I kind of wanted to talk, you know, like you know, we're going to have like a fight off between the two and nutritional value. Um, whenever you guys are growing your vegetables, I know a lot of us get in ruts, you know, you get the same kind of tomatoes, you get the same, you know, type of cucumbers. I want you kind of get out of the box a little bit and I want you to think about finding foods that are really purple, red, blue, sometimes they call them the blacks, you know, the different colors like that because they're really, really high in anthocyanins. And anthocyanins are, <laughs> this is a fancy word, those are basically like superpower antioxidants that help in disease fighting. They're really high in the anthocyanins um, and vitamin C. Usually in a lot of different foods you're going to get double the amount of vitamin C. Um, this red cabbage compared to the green cabbage has 10 they times... They call that red? Or purple cabbage, whatever you want to call it, yeah. So um, this red cabbage has 10 times more vitamin A than a green cabbage. And vitamin A is great for your eye health, your skin, all that. Um, and it also has a lot more potassium, it has more iron in it, um, and double the amount of vitamin C in this one because of its beautiful purple colors. So we really urge you guys when you're getting stuff for your gardens to get vegetables that are, you know, like the eggplants, the dark purpley color, get some different color tomatoes, the black tomatoes, the purple tomatoes, the blue tomatoes, all those. They're just wonderful in these anthocyanins that are wonderful for our body. Just remember that when you're having a plate of food in front of you, the more color it has, the more benefits it has to your body and what you need. That's true. That's good. And then, oh, what were you going to say? I was going to say, the reason why we're bringing this to you now, just like the onions is, you want to get these in early. These are an early planting crop. So our temperatures are about to break here. Uh, we have a fancy new greenhouse. It has not finished yet. <laughs> <laughs> I've been like this muggy, rainy, nasty, drizzly, crazy day for like a week. So all of our videos seem like they're a little dark, and I mean, it's just because that's what we're dealing with. But um, you want to get these in early um, and often because they'll keep uh, producing all, through the whole year. Well, in the cabbage, you're going to have your earlier varieties, so check into them, and you're going to have your later in the fall varieties right. because they like cooler weather. Um, but I'm not down and on the green cabbage because it's still huge and it's filled with a lot of vitamins right. and minerals. But the only thing when you talk about all the um, vitamins and things that the two have, this is far superior in nutritional value. But this one has a little bit more vitamin K. And vitamin K is good for your blood clotting. And, um, but it, it's any leafy green like your kale and your spinaches and stuff have that. But other than that, they still have, you know, all the same vitamins. This just has a little bit more in it. A little more punch. That's right. So, um, <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say. But it also helps with memory loss. It does. It does. It's very helpful for that. Actually, you're right. It does. It, the cabbage and, and the anthocyanins are good for your cognitive decline and your memory. I guess I need to eat a little bit more of that. But no, it does. It's very, it's very good for that. And just try not to cook it too much. I mean, um, you want to uh, cook it. In your raw form, you can ferment it. Of course, you can make sauerkraut with it. I love to ferment the red cabbage. Um, and the, and it, this has a little bit more of a peppery taste, I think, to it. Or uh, like, or I don't even know how to say it. It just has a little bit more, more of a richer. I, I, I just like this better. It's great in my salads. I chop it and I use it on my tacos when we have taco night. Taco I night. I love this one the best. And then that one's good too. 
So we're just bringing you guys this information because spring is in the air. It won't be that long. You guys are, are probably, I've seen some of you guys on Instagram with your grow lights and all the stuff already starting to sprout <laughs> your stuff. So um, just incorporate some of this stuff. We're going to keep bringing you guys these videos. And then as the spring progresses and I actually get my greenhouse done and all this other stuff going, we're going to show you our, our garden. This year we're going to be heavy in the garden, showing you guys what's uh, working for us and how we do things, some little tips and tricks. So and stay tuned because I'm going to give you two recipes, one for the green and one for the red. Ooh, bonus. Yep. Not today, <laughs> but maybe in the next couple days. Yeah, wait. just stay tuned for that. So basically that's it. Just uh, think about this. Uh, some people don't like to grow this. They don't like to eat it, but it is actually, it's, it's very good for yeah, you. Yeah, you, you can cook them, cabbage soups. I mean, you can do lots yep. and ferment them and or ferment just them. eat them raw. They're you know great. we're big fermenters. So this is Off Grid with Doug and Stacy. I'm Doug. I'm Stacy. Don't forget to check us out on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. And and what? And Homestead of the Homie Month Club, right? <laughs> Homestead of the Homie Month Club? Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 Once a month we're picking one of you guys that watches our videos, always leaves a comment, that's always hanging out, sticking around, um, even on uh, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Um, all through the month, uh, year of 2017, every month one person will win the Homestead of the Homie Month uh, thing, and then we're going to be sending them out a uh, clock from Layman's. Um, it's actually made out of a Lodge cast iron skillet with a clock inside of it. It's pretty cool. So uh, good luck with that, and we'll see you guys on the next episode. And grow for your health. That's right. Grow for your health. Hey, real quick, Homestead homies, because we know you guys stay to the end. Uh, we're going to uh, present you with the Homesteaders of America conference uh, video clip. Yay. Uh, hopefully we're going to see you guys there. It's October in... 14th in Virginia. That's right. So okay. we'll have a link down below, too, to... The website, ticket information, and all that kind of stuff. So start making your plans now. What a great time for a neat vacation. Yeah, we're trying to give you guys some advance notice so you can get the family in line or make sure you get there. And they just announced that children 17 and under or kids 17 and under are free. For sure. All right, so check this out. <laughs> All right, guys. So there's gonna be it's gonna be cram packed full of information. Uh, Amy's working really hard on this, uh, and again, we look forward to seeing you guys there, meeting you guys in person. Yep, good old meetups. So okay. we'll see. We'll see you guys later. This is Off Grid with Doug and Stacy. I'm Doug. I'm Stacy. We'll see you on the next. See you guys one. later.